This is insane. Hey guys, Colby here. Welcome back to another video. I just got mail. Look at that. Look at this. This is, um, I don't know. It came in the mail. I got a message by Plarium and I have no idea what this is and what it has inside. It's just a letter. Wasn't anything else in the box. I'll open it right now live and see what Plarium has sent me. It's probably like a hint for something that is coming. So I'm really curious to see on what this is. And all right, so I opened up. There's nothing else in the folder. It was just a card. I'll see it. You guys will see my reaction and then I'll show you. Um, okay. Right. Um, this is insane. If this is true, this is insane. So this is, this is the, the, what you can see. It's the card. Let me, let me remove the green screen for just a second. All right. So this is the green screen behind me, but I wanted to show you guys this, All right? So if you guys are aware of these cards, these are like 3d cards where they place one image on top of another. And when you move it around, it shows something. So this is not that really surprising part. It's like, it shows the champion, probably like Sylvan Watcher. All right, Sylvan Watcher. And it has like two forms. So it's already interesting. But what made me just pause there was, was this. All right? And I'll not show you everything. I'll, I won't show you everything. This is the name, okay? Arbys the Stone Thorn. Arbys the Stone Thorn insane actually to consider like the name then there there's a there's a scan code i'm not going to show you guys the scan code i'll scan it myself now and we'll see what that is then the affinity then it it says affinity force support all right force and support there's a force icon and rarity just just see what I mean there. Let me, let me help you guys see. Do you see what this is? Mythical rarity, mythical rarity. Um, this is quite insane. So is this going to be the first mythical champion in raid? I have no idea, but I've got my phone. I'll scan the QR code right now. It opens up. Oh my God. This is, this is insane. Red shards are coming into raid. Um, this is, this is quite the, the thing. This is quite the hype, honestly. So is she going to be the one champion coming into raid or buys the stone thorn, the stone thorn. All right. I'm, I'm looking at her skills. I'll, I'll put it up on the, the screen as well now. So she, she seems to have like two forms or something. Looks very interesting. So. Let me see if I can open up this link on, on PC. All right. So this is what the page, the, the, the scan code was showing. Uh, I'm going to show you guys here on my PC instead. I don't have any sound on. So I wonder if there's any sound for this. I'll, I'll turn it on. It's better for us to look at this, uh, like, so, mm, there appears to be no sound on the page, but I think I was just clicking on the, on the shard, the red shard. This was hinted in the past, by the way, by a red shard. It was like a, a Gallic holding a red shard and a sacred shard, I think, or an ancient shard. It was like the choice from the matrix, but this has come true. And I wonder if they had it in their minds before, or was this something that uh, they just came up with to eventually introduce? So let's see. It seems that Arbys the Stonehorn will have two forms and each form seems to have completely different set of skills. And is this her, her, um, lore so much lore. Honestly, I'm not a person for the lore. I'll let you guys the link down below. So I don't, I don't mind actually sharing this since they gave it to me. I'll, I'll share it with you guys. 
And I'm guessing all the other creators got different codes for other mythical champions added to raid. But just to get this out of the way, because I know many of you guys will react this way. Um, mythical shards, I'm guessing these will be impossible to get or close to impossible and only achievable through just buying them. Straight up buying them and they'll have like a much higher price. And these champions will be insane. What I hope for is ways for the majority of players out there to actually get these champions. All right, since there's no sound, I'm going to take off my headset and we'll see the, the hero together. Blade Gale, so attacks all enemies, has, has a 40% chance of placing block active skills debuff for one turn. Not that insane. Um, Verdant Rebath removes all buffs from all enemies, increases the duration of all ally buffs by one turn, then places a revive on death. All right, that's pretty cool. It doesn't show whether this is improved with um, skill books. And also, if this is a mythical champion, what kind of skills will they need? Skill books will they need? Will they not have skill books? This is very interesting, very unique thing for us. Um, in the five, four, five years that raid is out, fails the Terminator of all allies by 30% and places a 50% increase in attack buff and a 50% increase accuracy buff on all allies for two turns. Hmm. Interesting. Um, it's just it's just a standard buff plus increased increase attack plus increased accuracy. The increased accuracy is the new thing here. Five turns cooldown though, that looks like something that gets reduced with skill books, but we don't have mythical skill books in the game. Transforms this champion into their alternate form, then grants an extra turn. That is huge. So it allows you to play around with the forms, I'm guessing. And Stonehorn's Embrace Passive has a 30% chance. Um, has a 30% chance of placing Petrification debuff on an attacker for one turn. Whenever an ally is attacked while under revive on death buff placed by this champion. All right, petrification is kind of cool. Mithrala has this already where she basically controls enemies um, based on her hex and, and when they, they get hit. So aura in all battles speed by 25%. So let's look at the other version of this champion. So boom, look at that. Okay. Um, Boulder Hurl. Attacks one enemy, decreases the target's term meter by 30%. Then places a 15% continuous heal buff on this champion for one turn. Also places a 15% continuous heal buff on the ally with the lowest HP except this champion for one turn. Um, so yeah, it's, it's more like a control skill plus some healing. Then the A2 is an AoE attack with leech and HP burn. That's pretty cool. Doesn't look that interesting to be honest. Roar of the Mist Wood places continue, two continuous heal buffs on allies for two turns. Then a taunt on this champion as well as a stone skin buff that is pretty cool applying stone skin on yourself that's a new thing so sh th this champ will be applying stone skin plus taunt plus the continuous heals on everybody so this you transfer into the base form and get that extra turn those i wonder how the cooldowns work when you're in a different form i'm guessing they they don't go down as long as you're not in that form um it would be like having sheep so Tangle Thorn passive when attacked places a 30% decrease speed debuff on the attacker for two turns occurs once per hit. Also decreases the damage taken by all allies from skills by 20%. This champion will receive the damage instead. That is pretty cool. Very tanky kind of setup. Um, the stone skin doesn't really make sense here for, for this kind of setup, but I do like it as a way to protect plus the taunt, right? You, you apply the taunt. You force enemies single target attacks to, to hit you and then stone skin basically protects you. So it's pretty cool to have that as an activation, but it does show a longer cooldown, which I'm guessing will be reduced by uh, your skill books. And you'll be free to rotate through these, these different forms. And all right, let's, let's have a read through to the remaining mythical champions are a brand new champion rarity in raid shadow legends that have access to two forms each. With its own look and skills, a mythical champion can have varying roles across the two forms, such as attack and support. They use a unique skill called Metamorph to change between these two forms. And it's like having two champions in, in one. All right. Other unique aspects of mythical champions include higher base stats compared to legendary champions. Ooh, okay. Metamorph skills that cannot have their cooldowns increased or decreased. That is insane against Yumiko's and stuff. Skills that gain an ignore resistance bonus when upgraded via mythical tomes. There it is. 
<laughs> Skills that gain an ignore resistance bonus when upgraded via mythical tomes. They're primarily available, primarily available via summoning from primal shards. All right, that's how they call them. Primal shards. The red shards are the primal shards. Interesting. Okay. Overall, I love this. I love the this new introduction of this. I'm guessing there's many more champions added. I wonder if it's if they sent this out to all creators and if they made a mythical one for each faction. That would be so cool. So like I got Sylvan Watchers, maybe Scratch got the Dark Elves or something. Hell Hades got the dwarves for whatever reason. You know, they, they spread it around to many creators. Uh, or I wonder if it's just a limited release with maybe five champions or something. I think it's going to be more widespread. Um, so we'll see. I wonder how many you introduced with this. What they said here is that these champions will be primarily available through Primal Shards. Primal Shards, I'm afraid they will be like the, um, the white shards we have. Uh, what, what, what are the name? They're really expensive already. So the Primal Shards will be even more expensive. Um, I'm guessing if Primal Shards give you these mythical champions, it's going to be a guaranteed mythical. Or you get either a mythical champion or a legendary. So I wonder, I wonder. I have no idea how they'll price these things, but knowing, knowing how it, it's been so far, they, they'll be expensive. And the same thing with mythical tomes, that's where they'll get you. Mythical tomes will also be very difficult to acquire and... It's going to be starting from scratch for everybody. This goes along with many other decisions that the company has been taking for a long time, honestly. And I am hopeful that they'll add ways for us to get the primal shards. But um, if it's the same thing as the prism crystals, um, it will be very difficult for the majority of players to get them free to play or even low spend. But we'll see. Who knows? Maybe more difficulties will come in. Some new dungeon will come or a new clan boss here that has that as a reward. Um, I would be so thankful if we had that instead. But all we can do right now is just wait and, and, and see what you guys think of the mythical champions coming into raid. They look great. They'll have higher skills. They'll be an, a crazy addition to the 800 or so champions added into the game so far. So we'll see how that develops as time goes on. All right, guys. So this is the day after. Um, it's not very clear on when the release is coming for the primal shard heroes it's probably going to be like a big thing being launched together with what prime has mentioned if you guys remember the interview with serilla scratch had um i'm what i'm thinking is they'll add some kind of content is probably going to be this one the great void and it's going to be another clan boss for us to beat i hope that it's not like the hydro which is very very um random in terms of how the hydro works and how the uh, heads hit and with the buffs being stolen and all that it really removes the it, it's a real big difference with the demon lord with the normal demon lord so i wonder on how they'll go with this one if it's this the way that we are going to farm for those red shards the primal shards um i just hope it's very achievable by mid game accounts and higher it, it will have some sorts of difficulties like these, right? And you can get them throughout all the difficulties. And of course, the highest one having the highest rewards. Obviously, the stats required will be insane. And I'm hopeful that the live arena bonuses will be something added in there. So they'll add another row here for the new clan boss, okay? So we do have the Hydra, we do have the Demon Lord. So maybe saving these will be the right choice and the move forward in order to prepare yourself basically for what is coming into raid. So it's all speculation, by the way, on my side, that these are going to be uh, obtainable through through like new PvE content. But the biggest problem we will have is not the power creep and how more powerful some accounts will be because that, that was always the case. That will always be the case. The problem is, as always with raid, the time spent in the game, they need to cut some corners. I'm not just talking about the Demon Lord. That was a, a very welcome change, but it's not enough. We need it for Tomb Tower fights. We need it for Faction Wars. And we even need it for dungeons, I would say. It re they really need to cut some things back in order to reduce our time taken within the game so we can focus on the more important stuff. But um, until then, we're just hopeful and just waiting. Thank you, guys.
and for the, for the video i can't wait to see the other creators and what kind of champions they got through their cards I have no idea who else got it but i'm guessing everybody else from the top 15 up to top 20 maybe uh creators uh for sure they sent to to yst to nupkex to deadwood jedi to uh hell hades to ash to scratch so i can't think of any of those guys not getting like a card and, and it's just what how many did i say 10 people so if it's just one per faction that they've added to the game um there's many more that might have uh, got like something in their mail right so we'll see we'll see what Plyum has in store thank you all for watching subscribe guys if you haven't already really appreciate it thank you all i'll see you in the next one see ya